Hi, I'm Don. Today we continue work on the Sperto Rabu model. Part 1 of the painting of this model is at the link below. We will paint with Vallejo transparent paints and inks and also we're going to paint with a bit of washes and also we're going to do a bit of wet blending on the skin on the face of this model and of course a ton of weathering for the base. We will use some Vallejo pigments and some Vallejo weathering effects paints and washes to turn this model into this. Hi, I'm Don. Welcome to my studio. This channel is supported by all these brands. This project is a commission for Geekolodeon Studios. First, we separate the display base which is a huge 50mm base and the actual model. We'll use my Redgrass V2 wet palette which is harder to open. We start painting with white glaze. I highly recommend this paint but honestly when I started like using this one, I found it weird because it's transparent already. Of course, white paint, ordinary white paint plus glaze medium will work as well, but diluted or watered down white paint won't work as well as this white glaze paint. Since ordinary white paint is a bit more opaque than this white glaze paint, you tend to produce like patches or your painting is a bit more patchy with ordinary white paint, even if you water it down. Unless you water down ordinary white paint with so much water, then you'll have a wash or glaze consistency and you'll produce like a more subtle transitions. However, I feel that's a waste of time. So I highly recommend this white glaze paint even over white paint plus glaze medium. It's so much easier to use. Now we are truly done with the genital underpainting and now we move on to the colors. We're using fluorescent blue and transparent blue for the blue part of the base. Similar to the white glaze paint, the fluorescent blue is creamy or thick and you don't really have to thin it because it's already transparent. Now you see in the video, the full opacity of fluorescent blue, obviously it's transparent and I don't really thin it down too much because again it's transparent already unless you want to waste time. <laughs> After a couple of coats of fluorescent blue, we have a semi-full coverage. Then we mix the fluorescent blue a bit with transparent blue to give it a darker like blue tone and use it to add shade to our blue armor part. I applied a few layers of this mixture to the recessed areas of the armor to give our armor part a bit more volume. You could also use the thin down transparent blue as a shade to give our armor more volume. You don't really have to mix it, I was just playing it safe. The fluorescent blue is a bit shiny or has a bit of sheen but we'll fix that with matte varnish later in the video. Now we paint the flesh or the face of this Pertorabo model. I chose to give this model a redder, more reddish skin so that it will have a nice contrast with the very cool and very kind of dull armor parts. Since we did genital underpainting, you could actually paint the flesh with just washes and build up those washes and glaze it down to have volume but I decided to do like the painting of the flesh with a bit of wet blending and layering. I mix a tiny amount of our highlight sauce with the paint so that it remains a bit more wet longer than just thinning down with water. I'm painting with full opacity of the paint so there's no one is to one thinning here 
I think this is roughly around 3 parts paint or maybe even 5 parts paint and 1 part highlight sauce. I'm doing a bit of wet blending here even if the previous paint is still wet because we used the highlight sauce. I'm actually laying down the next color already. This wet layering technique kind of makes me curious about the Army Painter speed paints. I read somewhere that the speed paints are, they, they kind of reactivate as you paint again, as you, I don't know, really, I don't know. So I really want to test them, but unfortunately, I don't have access to those paints. I hope you can see in the video that although I'm doing a bit of wet layering, I'm kind of mixing more color so that I get good transitions. And now we're going to add more highlights with white flesh. Again, not much thinning here. I just added a bit of highlight sauce and painted it over the really raised areas of the model. Pretty easy wet layering technique and I hope you'll find it useful. Now we paint copper with Skin Wash Game Ink. The Skin Wash Ink has a yellowish tone if you apply it thinly but if you apply a couple more layers, it will turn into a reddish brown. You can see in the video, I am brave enough to use the inks without thinning it down or adding mediums. Valeo inks are very saturated and if you don't add a bit of medium or thin it down, you tend to get some coffee stains if you don't blend the edges. However, I'm not really concerned if I produce coffee stains here because we're going to weather this base a lot more later in the video. Also, if you've seen my older videos or my other videos, I tend to add mediums to inks to add a bit more transparency and to make the ink softer. Watering down inks is not an option because it will make the inks more runny and difficult to paint details. Now we paint the red cloth on the model. We are using transparent red which is awesome. In thin coats, it looks a bit like gum. <laughs> I mean, the color is gum-like. But to be honest, you could paint with any red paint because red paints tend to be more transparent than normal paint. So painting red over zenithal is actually very normal. I mean, you maximize the zenithal even if you use ordinary red paints. Again, not much thinning for this paint. I just applied it in two thin coats to get a full coverage. Now we paint the gold armor parts. I'm using skin wash but I'm mixing it one is to one with transparent yellow. You could also use yellow inks for this one. Honestly, I thought I grabbed yellow inks from my paint rack, but of course, transparent yellow will also work. Mixing the very runny ink with the creamier transparent yellow actually work better than mixing two inks. You all know I'm not a fan of the pooling and pushing of pigments on watered-down paints or wash-like consistency paints. So accidentally using transparent yellow which is very creamy with inks gave me the perfect consistency to have very good control in painting the gold parts. Yellows and yellow-orange citadel washes will also work for the gold parts. A couple of layers gave me a full coverage since the transparent yellow and of course the inks are very saturated. By the way, always make sure that you let dry in between coats or else you'll be rubbing the previous coat once you're painting the second coat. This will be NMM 
And I think I kind of accidentally painted NMM in an easier manner. Now we paint the red leather parts. We're using old rust wash here because it's the reddest wash that I have. You could also use Mecca old rust wash. It has the same tone but I think it's a bit more durable. Since we're using this wash as our base color, so again, there's no thinning. We just painted over the model. A couple of layers or even three coats will give you a full coverage. After painting the red leather parts, we're also using this old rust wash as a shade for our gold armor trims. Again, practically no thinning. We're just painting it over the recessed areas of the gold armor parts and also creating a sort of zenithal, which is I'm painting more on the left side so that I could show that the light source is coming from the right side. A couple of passes of the old rust wash over the gold armor trims will give you a nice shade and will give more volume to our gold parts. Sepia ink or even black ink will give more definition to these parts, but we'll do that much later. Now we paint the cables. I chose to use like blue wash, this blue wash from Game Wash, and a bit of ink later. But I chose blue so that it gives a bit of contrast to our very yellow and orangey or basically very warm armor so far. The blue wash is a bit too subtle for me though. You're better off with blue ink mixed with a bit of black or the ultramarine contrast paint. Since I don't like doing subtle stuff and I felt I kind of wasted a few minutes using the blue wash in this model. Now we need to apply a bit of warm tones to the white armor parts. I chose to use sepia shade because you could use sepia ink but you have to water it down too much and thus you can't really use your wet palette if you water it down too much and I'm lazy to use the mixing dish. <laughs> you see in the video I refrained from doing a lazy wash because I wanted to retain the white areas or highlights of the armor. So I'm just dabbing around the edges and the textured areas of the armor to give an impression of warm tones. Now we apply more weathering especially on the base of this model. Much like other Primark models from Warhammer, this Perturabo model has a very complex and detailed display base. I used natural shena for the groundwork to simulate soil and I used rust pigments to simulate or to show the build of rust around crevices and details of the base. Using pigments is the quickest and most natural looking way to create really fast weathering effects. I highly warn you about cheapo pigments though. I tried some cheapo pigments a while back. They're chalky and then once you apply them on the model, it's colored shena. But when you rub it, it will break into like chalky color or white. It's really a waste of time. Don't get those cheapo pigments that you'll see online. After sealing the model with mecha matte varnish, I applied a couple of thin coats to give a really nice matte finish and I painted around 8 to 10 inches away from the model. So now we're painting with more weathering effects paints. We're using Game Effects Rust and Verdigree and of course the Dark Rust from Panzer Aces. You could use a sponge and dip it on the Dark Rust and apply it on the model to create really nice shipping effects but i wanted to show that i'm really good with the brush and <laughs> so that i would look like a really great painter but kidding aside i was just lazy to get myself a piece of sponge 
So hopefully I'm successful and I'm kinda impressing you as I paint those tiny chipping effects with my brush to show you my brush control. <laughs> I think I spent more time on the weathering of this model than the actual painting of the base colors because I really enjoy this process since I'm really a gunpla painter and I'm just pretending to be a miniature painter. Yeah. Oh by the way, the game effects rust is a nice highlight color for the rust pigments that we applied earlier. To finish off the weathering, we're applying verdigris around the nut areas, <laughs> I mean the bolt areas of the base. I am very happy that I refrained from doing a lazy wash over the white armor parts of the base. Now we have a more contrast to the overall look of the model. Once happy with the weathering, we move on to finishing the model with highlights. We use our $100 per bottle highlight sauce which is actually just watered down retarder medium to paint the highlights. I highly recommend you start collecting some highlight colors and of course choose Vallejo or Citadel or other good brands because this will last you a lifetime and you'll use it a lot but in small amounts. Other than white and gloss white, you could never go wrong with ghost gray, ivory, or even deck tan, ice yellow, or skin tone, or sunny skin tone I mean, and all those paints are worth your buck and you'll use it a lot. Not much thinning here, but we're using our highlight sauce, we're just trying to mix a bit of like you need a bit more control so you don't want it to be super thin but at the same time you don't want it to be super thick. So I highly recommend you get, um, I mean you make a highlight sauce and it will keep the paints fresher on your detail brush longer and it will be easier to paint highlights and scratches and tiny details. You can't go wrong by painting too many highlights. I mean, there's no such thing as over highlights. Guess you could always tone it down with washes or even glaze paints later. I'm also aiming for a very subtle zenithal effect here. Most of the highlights are coming from the right side so that our light source will look like we have a nice light source on the right side and less highlights on the underside and the left side of the model. Applying more highlights on the other side or one side of a model or applying more extreme highlights with white or gloss white on one side of a model creates more volume or an illusion at least of more volume and more interest to your model. Quick tip, any ochre brown color or ochre brown yellow brownish color and also you could mix it a bit with ice yellow and ochre brown will be good highlight colors for the copper and the leather parts but the difference is you could add more scratches to the leather parts and apply more highlights ice yellow or even ivory to the copper parts but at some point of the painting process, you're practically using the same ochre brown color as highlights for both the leather and copper parts. Now I totally forgot about the cloth on in between the legs of Pertrubo, Perturabo, and I'm painting it with worn red which is really nice. It's from the Nocturna set and again I highly recommend that Nocturna set, you should get those sets, they're really awesome. As I've said earlier, you can apply as much highlights as you want since if you overdo it, you could always tone it down with washes or even contrast paints. Now we are finished with this Perturabo model. This is my second Primark model that I finished. The first one, I don't have a video. But next video, will have another Primark model. So if you like Primarks 
or a painting of Primarchs, you should subscribe to the channel. I forgot the name but will paint him soon. Now for our golden lemon reveal of our Perturabo model. I applied two thin coats of Mecha Matte Varnish. We'll let this model cure for at least a day and check if it needs more highlights or a bit more washes to add a really nice contrast to the overall look of the model. So we'll let this cure and then we do a bit of retouch for sure before we ship it to the client. A quick shout out to my client. This model, this Perturabo Primark model is a painting for Geekolodian Studios. That's it, we're done. I hope you liked the video. Do like, comment, subscribe, and consider joining the channel so that you'll be part of our Discord community. Saludos!